Investigation time. Investigation. Investigation time. Video games are everywhere, but are they for everyone? From pro to first time players to girl gamers and BIPOC gamers to those who game with disabilities and to those who make the very games that we play. I decided to figure it out. Anyone who wanted to know, I'm a pro gamer. What's up? So let's investigate. Do video games do enough to include everyone? Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, uh, commonly known as a blind gamer. Uh, I'm an accessibility advocate uh, and consultant. So that basically means I talk to video game studios about how to make their games uh, as accessible for disabled players as possible. With my glasses on, my vision is 2200 which means that something that is 20 feet away looks like it's 200 feet away. Wop, bop, baloo, bop, balop, bam, boom. Whoa, did not, but did, did, did not see you there. So what games have already started along that path to becoming more inclusive and accessible? Well, there are definitely a, a few. Uh, Last of Us Part Two is probably uh, the biggest one that's on PlayStation. Uh, you can be able to play it on PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. With a 3D audio, I can literally hear where everything is. And it's really amazing to be able to see because there are over 60 plus accessibility options that are designed for pretty much anybody with a disability uh, to be able to play. There's also uh, Gears 5. Uh, Overcooked actually just a, a released a, a brand new version of the game that just makes it more accessible to play. It's even Spider-Man uh, on PlayStation 4 uh, with Spider-Man and also Spider-Man Miles Morales on the PlayStation 5 have amazing uh, accessibility options so that more people can be able to play. Now I wanna talk about The Last of Us Part Two. Sure. So some people say that that game is the most accessible game ever. And you had something to do with that. Could you tell me a little bit more? Yeah, so um, there was about seven or eight uh, uh, consultants that were actually brought in uh, to uh, Naughty Dog, which is the company that made The Last of Us. Um, we were asked to come in uh, to the studio to be able to play a version of the game before the game ever came out. And we were able to sort of give our feedback on what they had so far. And they were ma they made a really big effort into making uh, the game as accessible right from the development uh, standpoint. So when we went in, we got to play. I got to play the game early. I got to try out a whole bunch of different things and they basically asked for my feedback on kind of what can be done to be able to make the game uh, more accessible. I heard that the Sims have added 40 new skin tones into their game. Is the definition of a game changer. I like it more on this end of the... Oh my gosh, this looks so good. What do you think about that kind of diversity? Honestly, I love that because um, I mean, a lot of people kind of growing up, they, they don't really get to see themselves that much in, in kind of the things we get to do, whether it's watching a TV show, movie, or even playing in video games. And the fact that you can be able to, within The Sims, create essentially yourself, I find that the ability to be able to like find uh, the right sort of skin tone or the right sort of uh, like character that, be able to, that looks exactly like you, that makes you feel like that you're in a video game, that is just so cool. So they're separated like warm, neutral, cool, and like like miscellaneous skin tones now. Oh my goodness, so many more options. So you were definitely at the front line for pushing for inclusiveness in video games. What's your end goal? What do you hope to accomplish? I, I'm not finished until um, it gets to a point where everybody can be able to play, regardless if you have a disability or um, you feel like you're not representative uh, in sort of like you're in a marginalized community, which basically uh, if you're if you're uh, black, if you're indigenous, um, if you're a person of color, if you're LGBTQ, regardless, if you feel like you are accepted and um, and fully brought into the video game community, that's when, where I feel like that uh, my, uh, my job is done. It's gonna take a while, and I think it, like we're we're moving towards that at a very rapid pace. Yeah, ah, I did it! I did the thing. After talking to Steve, it seems like video game developers are paying attention to requests for better accessibility and representation. But I can think of another group that's had to struggle to find a home in the gaming world: women and girls. 
and we're gonna talk about that in part two of our investigation. So stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm Elijah Sandy Ford for CBC Kids News. Game 